Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to what you would think would be a naval replay sent in by Captain Jack Sparrow, but instead, the P-63C-5. Now, my love of the era whatever is a huge aspect of my channel, and the P-63C-5 was the beginning of it all for me. So, sit back, relax, pour yourself a cup of delicious French tea. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know how to make French t tea, so I'll just retreat that statement. <laughs> what, that has got to be one of the lamest France bashes I've ever seen. But what is not lame is this the finest of all of the era cobra series the king cobra if you will the p63 c5 with an extended tail compared to previous models giving it better stability in high speed or low weight flight as the handling would get a little bit flat spinny on this aircraft if you ran out of 37 millimeter ammunition. Speaking of, uh, a girthier ammo stowage for the main gun, as well as still a reasonable amount of ammunition for the heavy machine guns mounted in the usual positions. It would be cool to see more options to remove the gun pods, even to have them considered a secondary armament, as they very much were removable. Now, whether or not pilots actually removed them is probably something of, uh, of a point of contention, uh, but I would love to see, again, that versatility added to an already versatile aircraft as we yammer on while Captain Jack is flying, no doubt looking for the rum. Uh, but this is actually not the Baba Al Rum skin that's available for the P63C5. I took the liberty of applying a custom camouflage I slapped together in about 15 minutes when I first started playing the P63C5. They're just a little bit of a cobalt blue filter for the metal and a permanent application of the smiling shark mouth uh, to give a little bit of extra class to an otherwise stellar aircraft. And with that, you can see the sky full of potential targets. We'll go ahead and turn the markers on so you can see what's going on here. And the UI gets a little bit busy at this point, as you do, especially in a replay. Captain Jack, B-17IB Squadron, I think. <laughs> so feel free to check them out in the game. And of course, my squadron is available to any fans of the channel. That's AmFam. You can see it in my name whenever you catch me playing the game. And we are a very small, not super active squadron of War Thunder. But we are willing to accept anyone who just commits to being a nice person. So... No guarantees that Captain Jack is going to be nice to the enemy team here, and we'll see how things turn out. As he's climbed to altitude here at 5k, with Yak 9s at and above his altitude, facing the Soviets that used to be so feared at this battle rating, and yet uh, most of the Lavochkins and Yaks can be defeated at higher altitudes by these American, yeah, this is an American aircraft essentially, and German aircraft that are really designed for high speed at high altitude with one yak at almost, uh, we'll say around 5,500 meters and the majority of the enemy team now slightly lower in energy than our man Captain Jack. 
he is about to have the opportunity to boom and zoom on some fools, starting off with a head-on approach to a Yak 9P. Neither one of them opening up yet. We're getting real close. Is the replay going to function properly? And he was actually coming up behind that Yak. My goodness, he was closing so quickly that Yak at this altitude might as well have been standing still. And with some good hits into the airframe of that Russian light fighter. Still, well, light compared to other aircraft of the game. I'm looking at you, P-47, <laughs> uh, at this altitude. He definitely suffers from a disadvantage. But right away, the LA-9s and the Yaks, or sorry, the LA-7s and the Yaks dragging these Americans, allies, down. I keep calling this an American plane. It, you know, made in America is the idea here. Uh, lent to the French such as they were at that point in the war. And beautiful kill there. Looks like a hit with the 37, of which, as I mentioned, you have increased ammunition. And at this point, uh, one Yak-9 still at high altitude, turning and burning with the big boys. A BF-109 US F-4 model and a P-38 contending with our Soviet foe and Captain Jack slotting in to his DMs. Was that fire set by him? I think so. If it wasn't a replay, I could know for sure, but I'm fairly certain that I would call it a lucky hit with the 50 cals, but it looked like he was right on target there. A man who knows his Ma Deuce. And if you're a pilot of an American aircraft, you want to be good to your Ma, and your Ma will be good to you. <laughs> good old M2 Browning for the win. That engine fire looks like it didn't finish off the Yak, but again, because that's somewhat of a lighter airframe, he's not going to be a threat at this point he certainly took a huge amount of damage and obviously Captain Jack now tangled up with his next foe pulling vertical loops against a Yak-9 at 1600 meters altitude it's anybody's game the Russian aircraft able to produce all kinds of energy at this altitude and yet the P-63 C-5 no slouch in that category either built for all altitudes performance with a supercharger for those higher altitude dogfights and a relatively light airframe when compared with other offerings from the Americans. It's no surprise that all of the Air Cobras in general uh, and the King Cobra as the king of them all are such desirable aircraft for mid to low altitude. The fact that you can also perform at higher ranges is just the cherry on top when it comes to the P-63 C-5. Uh, that yak that he shot earlier, engine now fully dead, gliding toward his own airfield, and Captain Jack managed to secure the kill away from his friendly competition. <laughs> A quick little aileron roll with a little bit of tail thrown in for sauciness shows that Jack is feeling squirrely now as he lines up his low altitude attack on this Yak-9. One of the fantastic aspects among many delightful features of the P-63 is its ability to quickly build energy at low altitude. You can end up going quite fast in a short amount of time. You have decent energy retention, uh, although extended vertical climbs could be an issue against heavier, more girthy aircraft. And if you do end up turning, uh, play your cards right, and you can turn with for a while just about anything in your battle rating range. So the P-63 
as with the P-39 that I've talked about before. Just a delightful aircraft to fly, in my humble opinion. Everybody has their own style. Uh, some people prefer things like the Mustang or the P-47, where you are entirely focused on speed and your handling at high speeds is fantastic when compared with the competition. Uh, some people prefer the more reliable guns of other models of aircraft, uh, the aforementioned being in that category. Uh, the P-63 definitely is something of an acquired taste when it comes to firepower, but once you get a feel for that 37, as RNG as it is, uh, there are few things as satisfying as derping an enemy aircraft with those large high explosive rounds. Although, they don't hit quite as hard as they used to in the past, in my humble estimation. Another thing to note is that because this is a replay, we're not going to be seeing things in sort of real time the way that Captain Jack saw them. Seems like there's a little bit of a delay, and there's something of a delay as well. It's not often that a replay hangs the way it did for a few frames there. But picking up his third kill, Captain Jack is now giving us a fine example of what it means to have a good match in Air RB. A lot of climbing. He went up to 5,500 meters. Uh, a lot of picking your targets. There, the, uh, the replay hung again. That is a little bit rare. Gaijin's net code uh, seems to have really suffered in terms of stability, especially with the introduction of the night vision mechanic and, uh, more notably, air-to-air -air guided missiles. Something about the heat-seeking missiles code just really messes with the overall uh, server stability, even in matches where heat-seeking missiles are not present. At least uh, that is the coincidence that I've noticed. It could be a mere coincidence. So let's get a little bit of a nice look at this beautiful plane as Captain Jack comes in for a landing and you can see the details on this aircraft are clean and nice. It has a reasonably high resolution base model and again this is the base skin just sort of recolored and with a, a free decal there. Uh, the propeller large uh, scoop bladed propeller ready to push the air where you need it to go. The pilot looking so aggressive with his breath mask on there for the Empire <laughs> or what have you. But it's little things like this the look of an aircraft, the unique way that it flies, and the P-63C5 does have a unique flight model, which is something to enjoy in the game. Uh, distinct little features like the added 37mm ammunition that can be so appreciated by pilots of P-39s, as well as the increased options when it comes to your belt types. The AP round on the 37 is not really useless. It's not as good as the Soviet 37's AP round. Uh, neither is it nearly as accurate. Also, you're not able to take a belt that has all AP, which would be really good for memes, but it's not entirely useless against armored targets either. With around 40-something millimeters of penetration at reasonable engagement ranges, if I'm not mistaken. All that is to say, the P-63 is a gorgeous aircraft that is versatile, effective, as we'll see here, even against Soviets at relatively low altitudes. Uh, the guns are... Not the best you'll find among American-type aircraft, but not the worst either, and they're definitely unique. And it's this mix of advantages and you could say slight disadvantages that really add character to the P-63 in general and really come to their fullest in this French tech tree equivalent that you will find at, I think this is a rank 4 
aircraft battle rating 4.7 4.3 something like that i think it's under 5.0 and it really sits in a sweet spot when it comes to air rb this is an aircraft that when the french tree came out i spent an incredible amount of time in uh, i don't think i ended up picking up a talisman for it but it's definitely one of those to sum up all of what I've been saying here since uh, Captain Jack landed, it's an aircraft you can fall in love with. And that big kaboom on the first yak we face in a head-on there, uh, I'm just imagining I'm sitting behind Captain Jack. He's doing all the work. Call me the navigator. <laughs> Uh, it gives you a reason why this is an aircraft that can get your heart to doki doki so well. Add to that the incredible incendiary potential of your late war M2 belts for the Browning heavy machine gun and you have yourself a recipe for an ace today and a chemistry for love. When it comes to finding an aircraft that definitely has a big place in my heart. Captain Jack, glad to see you in the replays area of Toshio Thunder. Good to see you on the channel and it's always nice to see someone having a great time in one of the aircraft that I definitely fell in love with. And thank you all for joining me for this replay video and of course feel free to send in your own action-packed or interesting replays to Toshio Thunder Discord channel or wherever you happen to catch me. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye